This wide receiver class in the 2024 NFL draft is stacked. Now, you could talk. Look, I know Brady, a.k.a. Bill Nye, the science guy, was spitting math oh my on God. quarterback hand size uh, or wide receiver hand size earlier earlier in the podcast. Brady's also a big economics guy, dudes. Don't know if you know that. Talk about scarcity, um, opportunity cost. It's yeah. like he went to – like he's like he has a, man. Supply, demand, yeah. And I think it is interesting <laughs> to see how many wide receivers end up going in the first round because you can make the cases like, all right, like there's like nine or ten guys that you think could be first-round picks. But at the same time, all of those guys, the, the fact that it's so deep allows people to say, all right, allows people to say, all right, maybe we can wait a little bit and get to you know grab somebody in the second round. We will see. Um, it's also the point that we don't know what teams are going to do. I mean, yeah, we, exactly. we did the mock draft before. I had all these Lions fans who were upset that I uh, had the Lions taking a safety in Tyler Newman. I'm like, well, for starters, let's just check something out. That Cam Sutton's no longer with the team. Branch can go down and play that nickel position. So you would technically in your nickel package need another safety. So that makes some sense, actually. And what didn't really make a lot of sense last year was when they took Jameer Gibbs and Jack Campbell. How many people had mocked that up last year for the Detroit Lions? So that is one of the funniest things is when it comes down to the draft, there's always going to be curveballs, uh, players that other teams have rated really high and they feel like is a need for them as opposed to what we feel like on the outside. I also, I was, I, just yeah. to talk about that, talking about it being a deep receiver class, because, I mean, there's been past years where they said it was a deep receiver class. But I think one thing we've noticed the last few years, like usually the, there's a difference between the top guys, like the tier one guys, and then there's a fall off between tier two and, and tier three or tier 1.5. So, I mean, going back to like the 21 class, right? When, when you look at it, or even 22 class, you see Garrett Wilson, Drake London, and then all the guys that were behind them have kind of fallen off the second round pick. So when you think you can get a guy in the second round, there's a chance to get one of these top three guys. I, I think some teams may be aggressive to try to trade up and get them because there's a clear cut difference between a guy that can come and help you from day one than taking a guy that's really good in the second round and he may pan out or may not pan out. Uh, yeah, I think we can probably, I, mean, I don't want to linger too long. You know, look, it's sort of like Caleb Williams. And just for time purposes, I mean, Marvin Harrison Jr. and the Cardinals makes too much sense, right? Like, yeah. I feel like there's a chance that the Cardinals, with their wide receiver room and that depth chart there, which has really been stripped down uh, over the last year, that they would even consider just saying, look, of course we'd love to trade down, but we know at four, we're, I mean, we are getting Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors. Like, we know that right. for a fact. Maybe you could trade down to six if somebody wants to come up and get a quarterback and you could pick up an additional first-round pick or something like that. Wouldn't have a problem with it. I don't see the Cardinals trade down of 11. I think, they, I think they're just too good a fit for Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, to that point, I know people have kind of marked maybe the Vikings moving up to four, but if you're the Cardinals, it's like, do you chance moving to 11 and not getting one of the top three receivers? Like, to your point, well, I wouldn't do that. Like, no. Like, Kyler Murray needs a true number one receiver. So, yes, you would love to get some more – draft capital because you have many needs on your team but if you have a foundational piece that could potentially turn into a generational talent like you're not moving off of that like that you'd be absurd to move off of that yeah go find uh, great. Yeah. Carol, right so carl's make a lot of sense um they need it you know they need it and he's the, he's the best one uh that, that's it's up for it so, makes so you're, sense. you're not you're not a, you're not a pete prisco acolyte who has malik neighbors above marvin harrison then and no, I, 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 I'm willing to admit that I feel like neighbors could have a better NFL career. Mm. And the reason why I say that is obviously situation circumstances always paramount. So the organization they end up with, the quarterback, you know, all that, the system, that all plays a factor. But I also think neighbors, if you look at the tape and what he was asked to do at LSU, moves around a little bit more, right? He's going to catch the ball uh, in the short wide receiver screens, uh, intermediate passing game downfield. You know, Marvin Harrison's going to have his opportunity too, but I don't know how much you're going to use him too, too much in the screen game and Correct. Any of the things that you designed for him just because he's not as small and shifty like Neighbors is. So he's like an old school, just alpha wide receiver one. I mean, yeah, exactly. Correct. Like Larry Fitzgerald, Correct. right? Like yeah. it wasn't. Or Marvin much. Harrison. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, he's bigger than his dad, though. Yeah. Like, that's the biggest that. difference. Like yeah. I compared him to Larry only because of the track record, but also it wasn't until later on in Larry's career where he moved into the slot and he started kind of finding the soft spots and zone and, and doing some of those things. Yeah, and, that was, and that was really all Bruce Arians coming in and like that was his philosophy with the number one wideout. He's, he wants you to move around, not live on the outside. It was, um, it was some of that, but it was also Larry's choice. Like he kind of realized like, hey, I'm not going to be outside 
running a bunch of deep routes, you know, deep digs, deep comebacks and all that. I mean, that's, that's just what he told me. I don't know. Maybe you talked to him. So. I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I mean, I've just been covering the league since before you were born. No big deal. Uh, the, I'm sorry, that's Pete Prisco. Um, I've been covering the league. I've, I've obviously not. I've been You've been covering the league as long as you have that red tan you've got right now. That's, that's, that's I've, been, I've, been, I've been covering the league since you were drafted, actually. That's kind of crazy. Well, yeah. uh, but that's mostly because I wasn't playing football professionally. Uh, all right, where would you where would you match make uh, Malik Neighbors to, though? Uh, I think the Giants, because because obviously you're looking at like they're in a desperate need of a wide receiver. Yeah, they can probably move around, do a variety of things. I'm assuming Harrison's gone by then, so I'm kind of factoring it in that way. Otherwise, I'd say Harrison. Uh, there would the Giants too, but I would say neighbors and, and the Giants would be a huge huge win for them. Yeah, I went I went with the Chargers. They need playmakers on the outside. They lost their number one and two receiver this offseason. One release, Mike Williams, and then Keenan Allen got traded. So Quint. Quinton Johnson and Josh Palmer are kind of like their only two receivers right now. I think uh, Malik Neighbors, you talk about being explosive. Brady, you talked about it. Nobody has a better start and stop in this draft class than Malik Neighbors. So, yes, we know Jim Harbaugh wants to be gritty on the O-line and run the football, but you still have a quarterback whose right arm has been blessed by the guards, uh, the gods. Get him a playmaker on the outside. All right. Uh, Roma Dunze, Brady, you have uh, Bears – Night bears to me, this is the and I had this in my mock draft, and um, uh, I don't think it's crazy to agree with it. Uh, you just want him on the Jets, dude. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, look, I mean, it, I, I think if you go get Caleb Williams, I know they got Keenan Allen, I know they got DJ Moore, but Keenan Allen's a one year rental basically, and DJ Moore is a really good number two. I don't what? know, he's a re- no, you're disrespectful. DJ Moore's a one. DJ he Moore, proved, DJ Moore he is, proved he was a one last year. DJ Moore is a low end one and a really, really good number two is what I'm saying. Not that he can't be a number one. I just think if you can get a guy who can make – you disagree? You guys do disagree too, Brady. I think he's a one. Yeah. yeah I, he disrespected DJ Moore, yeah, man. I, a, I also would say a, I, I feel like, you know, he's going to do a lot more than this offense uh, right. based on his ability. So I, I wouldn't categorize it that way. Look – I've got him going to the Bears because I feel like he fits kind of a need for that bigger body wide receiver going to isolate wide receiver going to you know match up in the red zone high back five you know high point in the football in the back end line that's more of my thought process behind what makes sense pair him with Caleb Williams at this point in the draft he is the next receiver that I think will be there and I also think if you're the Bears you know to me it's these three wide receivers we've talked about and a bit of a drop off you know to the next guys based on what we've seen so far in college so if that's the case. You got to grab him before the Jets because I know that's where Dews wants to go with it. <laughs> hey, if if hey, if if the Bears draft Roma Dunze and have DJ Moore on the roster for the next three years, who's the number one? Who's the number two? I think it's right, my case. Moore. It's still DJ Moore right it's now Moore. until Rome uh, proves that he could be the number one. Yeah, come on now, don't be disrespecting veterans nah, like you that. cannot disrespect DJ Moore like that. That's disrespect crazy. Veterans, <laughs> you know? I think DJ Moore's a really really good wide receiver. I think he's just bad better better off if he's, if he's your number two. What? Well, um, Garrett Wilson I, is a one. That's for well, sure. That's, 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 that'll be a conversation. Garrett Wilson will still be the one, even if Rome does go there. He'll have to prove that he could be the number one. But I selfishly, of course, I marked him to the Jets. But when I look at the Bears and what they've done, I, and me and Brady are on the same page, I think DJ Moore is a true number one. Keenan Allen is on a one year rental. But they also made a move in free agency to get Gerald Everett. And they bring in Shane Waldron. I wonder if they go maybe more two tight end sets. Sure. I've marked the. Yeah, I marked it the, because they got Cole Komet as well, and he's a guy that they really like to put out there on the outside in red zone and throw him the ball out there in one-on-one situations as well. When I look at the Bears, though, I think they need another edge rusher more than they need a receiver, right? We saw what Montez Sweat and how that trade transformed that defense. Well, just imagine if he had a book in with them. So, yes, yeah, selfishly, I want Rome. And, and, Brady, you know this, my affinity for Roma Dunze. I think when it's said and done, he'll be the best receiver out of all three of these guys. Wow. Um, yeah, so I, I to me, him going to the Jets and pairing him with, you know, Garrett Wilson, we know Mike Williams signed there, but he's coming off an ACL. Will he even be ready when the season starts is a question mark. I think you'll, it'll allow you to put Garrett Wilson in the slot a lot more, which is where he had a lot of success the last two years. And now he won't have to worry about that safety over the top because Rome's ability to go up and get the football in one-on-one situations. So, yes, selfishly, I want him to go to the Jets, but I just think the Bears need an edge rusher more than they need a receiver. All right, so the next tier of wide receivers, is it a two-man tier for you guys, Brian Mitchell and 
Uh, A.D. Mitchell, or uh, Brian, Brian Thomas. Thomas. And Mitchell. Yeah, Brian Thomas and A.D. Mitchell. Shout out Brian Mitchell. Um, I think I think Brian Thomas is 1.5, and then A.D.'s in tier two. Okay. Uh, I would say they're all kind of lumped together for me after that, honestly. Because I, I think I'm going to lean on them in a variety of ways. You know, Brian Thomas is more of the downfield, you know, speed and – can he carry it and become a number one? I think, you know, he'd be the big play wide receiver you're looking to. A.D. Mitchell, I think, more as the body, shape, size, and everything. Correct. It's just he kind of shared that responsibility with Xavier Worthy at Texas and Jatavian Sanders at tight end. You know, Ladd McConkey's going to be your, your traditional slot, but I think it's more than that. I think we're probably underselling his uh, his his twitch, his ability to separate oh, yeah. closer to Cooper Cup. You know, Keon Coleman can do a bunch of different things, even for his size. So, I don't know. I kind of I kind of lump all these guys in together as far as that next tier of guys that you know you're looking at saying um, you know they're very capable of maybe developing into a one, but I don't think anyone's drafting them and saying they're going to be able to you know carry them that way. Right. I mean, one receiver we don't have on here, but I know Will really likes him. I know Pete loves him. Is Troy Franklin out of uh, yeah? Out of Oregon. Out of Oregon. He's, he's better than team. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Got going in the second round. <laughs> Uh, what, well, let me ask you this: Out of that group you mentioned, Brady, uh, what's what's your favorite uh, guy that you matched up, or one you give two, one or two if you want? I mean, you guys both had Ad Mitchell to the Bills. I know Adam Schefter was on. Um, it's, it's worthy. It's worthy to the Chiefs because I just I want to see really? that offense with speed again. Like I want every single defense and defensive coordinator to be so scared of Patrick Mahomes and Hollywood Brown and Xavier Worthy and Travis Kelsey and like. How are we going to match up? Like, I am dying for this to become a reality because I miss the days of watching that offense with Tyreek Hill. And uh, it's sad. Like, it was like Pete watches, Pete Prisco watches soap operas. And I, I know he gets emotional about when, like, there's his breakups and things. This he's was, young, he's a young and the restless guy. I mean, I mean 100%, young and the restless. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This was heartbreaking for me to watch them separate. I know the Chiefs have won back to back Super Bowls and Tyreek's doing great in Miami. I still like have these little like thought bubbles with like, you know, a heart for both those guys, like getting back together and finding a way of getting it back together. <laughs> yeah. To, to me, um, the chiefs are definitely gonna go receiver in the first round. Could it be a situation where AD Mitchell yeah. maybe slips to them? Could Brian Thomas even slip to the back of the first round? I think Xavier worthy makes a ton of sense as well. I mean, I've even heard rumors Xavier Leggett could make some sense to them at the back of the first round. Cause we actually never seen, Patrick Mahomes with a big body receiver, right? So a guy that can actually go out there and win in the, win in the red zone or win on those 50-50 jump contested passes. We actually haven't seen Mahomes with that. So just imagine if he had that. When, when I look at this list, uh, I love Brian Thomas as well. I think he could do a lot more. I think he was kind of overshadowed by what Malik Neighbors can do. Uh, and I think the one thing that he kind of wanted to emphasize during this process is that he could run all the routes because – Brady, when people talk about him, they talk about him just how, how you talked about him, right? He's a guy that can really threaten you down the field. He can take the top off the defense. But I saw him run dig routes. I saw him run drag routes. I saw him run comeback routes. They just didn't feature it enough in his game because Malik Neighbors did a lot of that <laughs> in that LSU offense. So he's a guy I really like. And then Lab McConkey, I just watched him again last night. And to your point, Brady, people are just trying to ch put this guy in the slot. No, he's a complete receiver. The way he's able to separate. I mean, I saw a rep last night versus Terry on uh, Arnold, who's probably going to be a top 13 pick. And, oh, my God, he he sold the post, Brady, and, and, and ran an out route and literally had like four yards of separation hey, on Terry on Arnold. <laughs> could you imagine someone saying the best fit for him would be New England just because all the white slot receivers they've had? <laughs> Yo, you imagine up, someone, imagine just, someone saying I that. I just said it because he's going to be there at the top of the second and they need a receiver. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I didn't even think about that. I should have thought about it. The capacity of the Edelman West Welsh. Oh, he's a white guy. He can play wide receiver. Where does he go? New England. Uh, New England. <laughs> Well, I mean, in, I didn't in, even think about that. In Deuce's and, defense, you did make a Cooper Cup comp with Lad McConkey, which is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. The whole thing, so I think people look at him like hey, he's like a hundred Renfro. It's like, no, no, no. I think his upside's close yeah, to yeah, yeah. Uh, right. the offensive player of the year. Yeah, I, I wanted to compare him to Calvin Johnson. It's just the measurables really didn't or they weren't there. Well, well, you know what his measurables compared you know. to? Garrett Wilson. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Yeah. 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 Uh, by the way, you know what's crazy is you can actually take like there's a three year stretch of Calvin Johnson's career and it pair it's like 
well, Wes Welker has better numbers over the same three-year stretch of Calvin Johnson. Wes Welker was a monster with New England. Man. People, under, yeah. people undersell it. Definitely was. I just can't um, believe would, this would do that. Unbelievable. No, I, don't. I, can't. I, think, I, think, I didn't even think about that, Brady. All, that. All, all white slot receivers look the same. So that's, <laughs> right. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I, like I, I will Patriot, say just, doesn't he? <laughs> Two two notes, maybe the maybe 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 a Bill Belichick Patriot. Two notes. Um, one, the I think Labacon, I think Labacon, he's a first round pick. I think he's sort of pushed Ooh. himself up into that discussion. You could see uh, the receivers, receivers could shake out all different kinds of ways. I think he's there. I uh, then two, I heard uh, Adam Schefter on uh, Adam Levitan's Established Run podcast. He's just been blindly asked, name one guy who's going to go much higher in the draft than he's being projected, and he said A.D. Mitchell was the guy that he thinks. Um, we'll be long gone by the. You don't see him 20s. in person. He, 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 he's a monster. He looks the part, man. He's, he's a monster. He's physically built to be that guy. Just it really didn't happen for him at any point where he was solely that guy. But I, I think he can develop into that for sure. Correct. Uh, you, but you guys both mentioned uh, Brady had Brian Thomas, Carolina thirty third overall. Dues had um, uh, Xavier Leggett to the Panthers in the second round. Do you think there's a chance? That, I, th- I think this is realistic that the Panthers. Uh, do one of two things, and it depends on who's pulling the strings in Carolina. If it's Dana yeah. Tepper still the puppeteer, I think they could package those two second round picks, move into the first, and grab a wide receiver. If Dan Morgan really has full control here, I don't think it'd be surprising if they just sat back, hope for uh, some some scarcity, some supply and demand, some economic principles to take place. <laughs> I think Dan, Dan Morgan might have been an economics major at UCLA, and then I don't think that's true. And then uh, grab two <laughs> wide receivers. They played in Miami. What? Yeah, why did I think he played at UCLA? UCLA, know. jeez, dude, come on, man, he went to the U. Don't definitely. Why did he coach at UCLA? Yeah, he went to the U. Obviously, yeah, clearly. Oh, um, <laughs> who, who am I thinking about it with UCLA? It's a good I question. I don't know, but don't. but but will I don't. The thing is, the Panthers are essentially still getting a first round pick because I believe they picked first in the in the second round. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, so like right. I don't I don't know if they package those two second round picks to move up just because they have needs on this team right they can still get with those two high-end second round picks okay yeah but uh but yeah i think i think both of those guys make sense as a fit uh for the panthers would be shocked if they didn't take uh someone there Keon Man, Coleman, right, you got brian brian falling to the second round huh yeah the, the first pick of the second round i mean it's, it's <laughs> probably, yeah probably he asked me for best pick. fit and that's one of the reasons because if you look at what they've done this offseason They've obviously addressed uh, somewhat of the wide receiver position, but they still need to in the draft. So Correct. it makes sense there. He could very well go in the first round. Uh, I got, I kind of get with with the Xavier Leggett, um, Malachi Corley. I was kind of more of actually like the floor of where I think that's the latest they'll go. Yeah. Um, so like get the latest, I think, I think he's going to be a top 50 draft pick, but I don't think yeah. he gets past Cincinnati at 49. Correct. Uh, Corley not past the Giants at 47, depending on what they do at number six. You know, Keon Coleman, I think he – if he gets out of the first round, it's probably New England then at 34 that ends up taking him. So, with, with those guys – You, you think Keon, Cole, Keon Coleman hasn't been talked about at all? No, I, don't think, I, don't I, like I honestly think he's going lower than that, Brady, to be honest with you. I, again, it's just so you understand, dudes, I think he is two. I think that's oh, the okay. four. So oh, I got you. Is the, yeah. the highest they'll go in the draft. Like, they're not going right. to fall any more than that. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, but but uh, Keon, Keon Coleman um, – Circus Sports opened up his over under draft position 48 and a half for, for whatever it's worth. So that's, oh. um, that's, right. that's, eight. that's, that's yeah. not predictive eight. of anything, you know? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. It's just an educated guess, Brady. <laughs> it's, it's not. Probably, I mean, it's reactionary. Really. They're, they're reacting to news, dudes. That's what they're <laughs> Right. That's thank you for telling me about the the betting market. Like, you right, right pull a Frisco. You're you're using you're using it when you want to. Like it's like oh, <laughs> when's the quarterback scale comes out? Ah, it comes out when I want to. Hey, when the back to back road come out? Well, it comes out when I want to. Like that's what you're doing right now. You're pulling a Pete Prisco. 